All right, hey guys, welcome back. Uh, I can't believe I'm doing this. I'm actually going to be reviewing a uh, you know anime, a Japanese anime film for the first time, I think. And uh, I mean, I've been a fan of anime for a really long time. I've watched all sorts of it since the days of, uh, I believe, Samurai Axe, uh, Ranma Half, of course, the, the likes of uh, Pokemon, Digimon. I've even watched films like Akira. Uh, but there are still a lot of films that I believe I uh, I owe myself to watch. And uh, one of my favorite, I mean, just to let you guys know off the top of my head, my favorite enemies are probably like Code Geass, uh, the likes of Hunter x Hunter, Yu Yu Hakusho. Uh, a lot of these uh, action-packed uh, yet uh, serious, uh, intense enemies are sort of my favorite. Um, and I, I don't like very long seasons of anime, uh, and I like very much uh, the core and original stories. Like uh, for Naruto Shippuden, I pretty much like the series up to the point Naruto fought Pain. And uh, beyond that, the Madara fight and everything I felt was just a bit too uh, stretched out just for the sake of selling more episodes. And uh, recently, I've been into the likes of um, My Hero Academia. Uh, of course, uh, you know, uh, Demon Slayer and uh, what do you call this, uh, the uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, which is uh, some sorcerer or something. I forgot the name of it exactly. So anyway, just just let you guys know uh, what, I, what my experience of anime has been. And uh, here, as I watched this uh, film recently, I, I must say it's not bad. It's, it's, really, it's really a fun film. Um, the Demon Slayer lore, or rather the story of the overall Demon Slayer, is really, really nice. Uh, the animation, of course, is absolutely beautiful because it's UFO table, and uh, these guys have some of the best animations in all their, in all their, you know, uh, in all their work. And uh, the anime of Demon Slayer is really, really nice. It's really great. The story is beautiful. Uh, the characters are lovable, uh, and of course there you have the annoying types, you have, uh, what's his name, Zenitsu? Yeah, Zenitsu is pretty annoying, but uh, the rest of them are pretty uh, fun, and uh, you know, the comedy is nice, it lands, uh, characters can get quite serious during the fight parts, and uh, I felt that uh, they take their characters seriously, so the anime feels quite intense, the story is great. Uh, but I can't judge this film based on uh, its overall anime story because this film is by itself. So don't get upset if I if my rating seems a little harsh at the end of this because as I'm telling you, the anime is really good. I probably rate the entire anime like an eight out of ten. Okay, uh, plus minus one. You can take it as a nine out of ten. You can take it as a seven out of ten. That's up to you. But I usually go with uh, the average. I think which is an eight out of ten. But this film by itself uh, doesn't really give you much besides just a quick episodic story of um, these demon slayers uh, who go to a train and the train is apparently infected with some sort of demons. Uh, so before I proceed, once again, this is a spoiler review. Make sure you check the titles and all of that stuff. Uh, don't get caught up, uh, you know, without, um, you know, <laughs> saying that I didn't keep you guys on guard. Uh, so... Uh, what I really liked about this film, of course, is the quality of animation, the characters are true to the, um, the anime series, and additionally, what I, liked, what I like about this is that, you see, some Japanese anime films are not really related to the main storyline of the series. More than often, they're sort of fillers, or they're like a parallel uh, could be, um, or they're just like a story that feels sort of detached or not really relevant to the main storyline. And one of the recent examples is the uh, My Hero Academia version, where uh, Deku and uh, All Might uh, fight this giant mechanical monster. And the way that story uh, developed uh, from the main storyline, I felt was not really necessary. Like, uh, even after that fight, the main storyline just continued as it, as it normally would, and I didn't really see a connection between these two. Uh, you know, maybe there were subtle hints or whatever, but it didn't feel necessary. It wasn't like an important thing. But in this Demon Slayer series, uh, as much as I like both animes, yeah, in this Demon Slayer series, this film, the Mugen Train uh, film, is uh, really part of the main storyline. Um, 
So that's kind of cool. That's kind of nice. It means that I'm watching this and I'm still getting a story and not just a filler. And I appreciate that because I don't like my characters to go through an arc and you know have it absolutely wasted like uh, some other films do it. And I, I'm, I'm done uh, referencing films anyway. So um, in this one, we get to see a story where uh, Tanjiro... Um, What's his name? Uh, Zenitsu and what's the other guy? There's there's that uh, the guy that boar guy. Um, uh, Inosuke, right? Wait, why are the two people? Oh, there's one guy voiced it in English. I see. And Inosuke, they go to the uh, Mugen train and they board it and they look out for the uh, flame Hashira and the flame Hashira uh, Rengoku. Uh, I believe it's Kyojiro, right? Rengoku Kyojiro. Is that the one? Shinjiro. I don't know why there's two. Oh god. It's a Ren it's one of the Ren Gokus, guys. It's one of the Ren Gokus. Uh he's the flame Hashira, and the Hashira means pillar in English. If you guys watch the English version and not sure what it is, uh Hashira means uh pillar in English. So uh, or I'm not sure whether that's the direct translation, but that's what it means. Uh, I watch it usually uh, in Japanese with English subs. I enjoy it a lot better that way because I feel the voice acting is just so much cooler. Uh, so anyway, that's just me. So as I went through this story, uh, it's really nice. They introduced uh, Hashira's backstory, his character. They gave him weight. It was so beautiful to see uh, his interactions with uh, Tanjiro, and he, you know, Tanjiro managed to uh, get a little bit of information out of the Flame Hashira regarding the. Um, the the, the uh, sun breathing technique, which is what he was investigating, because uh, he's one of the few, or rather perhaps the only uh, demon slayer who's able to use the sun breathing technique, uh, you know, on top of his existing water breathing technique. So he wants to investigate more about how it came to be and why his reflexes, uh, you know, engaged or rather. Uh, created this technique all of a sudden and uh, used it and he doesn't know his origin but he feels his, it probably came from a dance that his father was doing when he was young so uh, we're getting a little bit of lore but we don't really get too much of it uh, it's still kept as quite a mystery because at the end of this film unfortunately the flame Hashira dies and he just gives uh, Tanjiro a kind of clue to tell him go to this place and you can find out more uh, it's just how the film ends with Tanjiro going to that new place and telling them that unfortunately the flame Hashira has died but I'm here to send uh, you know my condolences inform you that the of, of this mishap and I need your help I need your help to find out about this sun breathing thing so that's that's the end but the in between of the entire film is a long sort of built uh, action sequence a well a well built one action sequence of uh, the demon slayers fighting on board the train to protect the passengers uh, while you know uh, someone goes to uh, try to be hit the demon that is in in control of the train so the the main re demon is quite powerful he manages to fuse with the train and uh, it tries to use that as a way of digesting the people inside the train. And the demon slayers, of course, they, they come to the train knowing of this existence of this demon. And uh, that's, the, that's the reason why uh, they're there in the first place to try to like, investigate about it. And also look for the flame Hashira. And uh, turns out the demon is actually quite powerful. Uh, and it works by placing a curse. And the way it avoids the demon slayers from directly detecting that they are getting cursed is that it's it uses a human person. It uh, kind of bribes them by telling them, I'll give you good dreams. Uh, all the humans in the story have some brutal past, the ones working with the demons. And they have some nice stories as well. Their family is killed, you know, and, and all sorts of things happen to them. And they just want uh, a way to have good dreams. And since this demon is a dream demon, he tells them, okay, I'm going to give you a bunch of tickets. Give them to the demon slayers. Uh, and when the demons and when you punch their tickets, uh, that's when the curse activates. And I thought that was pretty smart. There's a nice and cool little interaction there. And even Tanjiro, with his incredible sense of smell, was not able to detect uh, the odor because it was extended through the tickets and rather not a direct demon giving him. Uh, so the demon stayed quite hidden until uh, everyone went to sleep and then he started to attack them in their dreams. And, uh, of course, we get to see a lot of backstory in this. We get to see Tanjiro's, uh, you know, interaction with his family. We get to see uh, new stories, uh, more so about uh, Inosuke uh, and Zenitsu as well, and, of course, uh, Rengoku. But I felt that their stories were, were not as impressive as I thought they would be. 
Um, of course, end of the day, uh, Tanjiro's story is still, you know, pretty much the best among all of them. But despite that, uh, we already know most of Tanjiro's story. So this film is sort of like just reminding you of the same story again and just testing Tanjiro's uh, limits and his capability as a demon slayer. And it shows beautiful character growth and I hope it's really carried forth to the upcoming series that will continue. So aside from that, we just get some beautiful action sequences. Uh, everyone is defending the train. The Flame Hashira manages to defend like a, a a bunch of coaches. I think three or five coaches or something. And then a Zenitsu, uh, when he falls asleep, I mean, we all know what happens when Zenitsu falls asleep. But for those who don't, when he falls asleep, he turns into this absolute beast of a demon slayer. His lightning uh, breathing technique just goes nuts because of some subconscious in him that takes over. And uh, he just wrecks all the demons uh, in the train or rather the the the, the, the train's body that is attacking the people. And, uh, of course, uh, what do you call this? We have uh, Inosuke, who plays a rather important role to try to keep Tanjiro alert uh, when, you know, the demon tries to make Tanjiro fall asleep. And I like the teamwork they put up together, but it comes out to a uh, one-on-one towards the end between the Flame Hashira and the demon, and the demon turns out to be one of the upper moons or something like that, or lower, I'm sorry if I get it wrong, lower or upper moon, but one of the moon demons, which means he's like a, a an extra powerful demon. And uh, when it comes to that uh, portion of it, it's pretty much a one-on-one, -on -one and uh, the Flame Hashira gets murdered, and unfortunately, you know, that takes place. And let me just try to see if I can get the uh, Akaza, I can't remember which is the demon. Um, but, uh, anyway, yeah, that, that, that thing happens. So overall, my, um, rating for this film, let me just, uh, pull it up quickly for you. There you go. A six out of 10. So reason for six out of 10 is because I felt that, um, it's not really a standalone film because obviously it's continuing from the existing TV series. So it takes a lot of references from the series to try to uh, show that it has weight. But by itself, actually, it doesn't really have much weight. It's more so just a simple story of this bunch of people on a train uh, trying to stop a demon, and that's pretty much it. Um, it's nice to see a bit of dream sequences and backstories, but nothing out of the ordinary, no no extraordinary ideas. The only thing I found was creative was the little uh, ticket stamping thing by the demon. Uh, but besides that, Nothing else so impressive. Of course, Tanjiro killing himself over and over again multiple times was, you know, pretty impressive. But, I mean, yeah, it's nice. Great character development, but it's nothing new. We have seen characters uh, do this before. Like, uh, you know, there are other iterations of characters who would kill themselves uh, just in order to, you know, form a sacrifice themselves to uh, stop the enemy. But, of course, the way they showed that Tanjiro was willing to kill himself over and over again to wake up from his dream, I felt... Uh, really shows the character growth. And uh, that was really nice. It'll probably have a lot more weight in the TV series. But uh, here alone, uh, that's pretty much it. It's just Tanjiro and maybe the demon a little bit. Uh, and it's nice to see the Flame Hashira in action, but unfortunately we won't see any more of him because he is now dead. So that's it from me, and I feel that this is a must-watch film for those of you who are Demon Slayer fans, for those of you who are not Demon Slayer fans. It's not really a must-watch. There's so many other uh, movies out there, uh, anime movies especially, that's way better and, you know, it carries its own weight. Uh, but if you are a fan of Demon Slayer, this is a must-watch. Uh, it's a really nice film. And I think this is a good start. If we have more films like these, I think uh, we would probably get uh, a lot better films in times to come. So if this starts off for me as a 6 out of 10, maybe for you it's a 9 out of 10, 8 out of 10. But uh, for me, the only way I see it is that uh, these people are going to get only better at what they do. The story is going to develop even more. The action sequences are going to get even better. Uh, the characters are going to be even more developed, uh, even more grown. And uh, we're going to probably see a lot more interesting demons. Uh, the train demon is okay. I mean, it's not the coolest. But I want to see Michael Jackson fighting... Um, uh, what do you call it, Tanjiro, uh, well, someday, hopefully, and uh, if you guys don't know who Michael Jackson is, uh, he he, you guys have to check out this uh, series to figure that out for yourselves. So that's it for me. Um, I mean, that's pretty much it. I, I know some of you guys may be upset about this rating. I understand. I want to give it a higher rating. I really do because I like this, because I like the, the anime as a whole. And for the anime, as I said, I will rate the entire anime probably an 8 out of 10. But this film by itself, I felt was... Uh, 
it's just relying too much on references from the anime to stay alive. Uh, it doesn't really do too much on its own. So yeah, that's it. Uh, Alright guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time, maybe the next one. And I don't know if you guys like anime films. Maybe I should make more of these. I'm not really sure. Uh, I just do this for fun, as I said before, because uh, I want to review things that I enjoy. So and if there's anything in particular that you're looking forward to, let me know. See you guys.